Now, concerns over a rise in a new COVID variant are making some of the front pages this morning. It's led to health officials warning that there could be a return of face masks. Well, Dr Amir joins me now. Um, do you think that's likely to happen, Amir? And if it was, does it really make a difference? Morning, Lorraine. So I don't think it's going to come back as a mandate wearing face masks. What we do know about face masks is part of a wider public health measures. Uh, they do help prevent uh, airborne and drop, droplet-borne illnesses like COVID. This new variant that health experts are warning us about is something called XBB15, and it's an offshoot of an Omicron XBB variant. Now, it's causing huge surges of infection across parts of Asia and certainly in North America as well. And what we know about it is that it can evade some of the immune system that is targeted by vaccines and natural infections, and it's slightly more infectious than the previous Omicron variant. It doesn't show any more serious illness than previous Omicron variants, which is really good. And actually, the vaccines that are going around at the moment for COVID are the bivalent vaccines, which contain the Omicron variant. So they should offer a bit more protection against this new variant. My advice, as always, is to avoid Avoid getting COVID if you can, because COVID is so unpredictable. It can be mild for some people. It can cause long COVID in other people. So avoid it if you can. And if that means wearing a mask, the best mask to wear is an FFP2 mask, which will filter out viral particles as best, better than a cloth mask can. So if you're high risk, if you've got symptoms, the UK Health Protection Agency advise wearing a mask. I think that's sensible advice, to be honest. Very much so. And it's like I was saying, it sends out a signal that maybe you're not feeling too good or you're feeling a bit vulnerable and it just lets people know to kind of almost keep their distance in a way. It's just that it's, it's, it's sending that message out without it being overt. I mean, we asked, uh, we asked our viewers on social media, should masks be brought back? We asked you that. 35% of you said, yes, they should. And 65% of you, obviously, against that. But I guess it is it's an individual thing. Now, it's a choice. Yes, yeah. exactly. It is a choice. And we're lucky that we do have choices. Um, lots of people are going to be talking about New Year resolutions. Of course they do. But I guess, I mean, it's all about making it achievable. And sometimes it's just tiny little changes that can make all the difference. That's right. I'm not a big fan of New Year's resolutions. Most people fail by the end of January and, and that can make, thing, make them feel worse. But if you are going to make New Year's resolutions, my advice is to add things in rather than restrict stuff. So I would say add in more sleep to your day because sleep it has loads of health benefits. Add in an extra hour of sleep maybe a day. If you're looking at your, your food that you, you take in, Add in nutritious, dense, den, nutrient dense food like vegetables rather than take things away. And that way you may be fuller and less likely to eat things that don't have as many nutrients in. And rather than think about exercise, think about movement. What do you like doing? I like a bit of dancing. So put your favorite song on and just dance like nobody's watching for five <laughs> minutes. Put it on repeat, make it 10 minutes. Great exercise. If you like chatting like you, Lorraine, <laughs> maybe take a friend out for a walk and chat while you walk. And I love that this. Get more movement in. Yes, Add do more. <laughs> do more things. Do more things. Now, people that booze, what about dry January? Do you think that's that? I mean, is that actually going to make a difference and is it doable? Now, as a healthcare professional, I am a fan of dry January because people who do complete dry January, that is not having al any alcohol through the month of January, are more likely to have safer, healthier alcohol habits going forward. And we recommend alcohol-free days interspersed through the week. So, yes, I am a fan of dry January, but if you can't do complete dry January, make sure you have alcohol-free days through the week. But I do feel sorry for pub landlords and bar owners. So my advice, again, to support them is maybe go for a pub lunch, have some alcohol-free beer. That way you're doing dry January and Thank supporting you. your local. Fantastic. Job done. I like that. We do, though, you're talking about, you know, booze-free um, drinks and things. We all actually need to drink more water, don't we? We certainly do. Hydration is really important to health. And a new study shows that drinking eight glasses of water actually can help reduce the risk of heart disease, stroke and kidney disease. Now, there's some debate over eight glasses of water in other studies. People's water intake will vary and their need for water will vary. Uh, but your food provides you with some water as well. Vegetables and fish, all of those things contain water. If you're exercising more, you'll need more water. Some people will have health problems, which means they can't drink eight glasses of water because that can make their health problems worse. It's all about individual needs for water. But overall, good hydration is good health. And water, drink it. It's good for you. If, you're, if, if your doctor says you can drink lots of water, drink lots of water.
excellent advice and you are on later on in the show, Amir, with, again, talking healthy, but talking healthy and, and it's actually enjoyable and fun. It is. I'm sharing a Mama Khan recipe later on in the show and it will support your immune system and support your health and it's whole wholesome food, really healthy, really easy to make, none of those preservative, preservatives or additives, wholesome food. Sounds fantastic. Thank you, Amir. Look forward to that. Cooking has always been part of our family's tradition and many of the recipes I use have been passed down from generation to generation. We often cook as a family under the watchful eye of my mum and as a doctor I like to ensure that we are all eating healthily and I've got some recipes that I'd like to share with you. This humble cauliflower has lots of vitamin C in which is great for our immune systems and boosting your heart health. Who would have known it? A whole cauliflower may be too much for a family of four to eat. So I've got a simple hack. Frozen cauliflower florets. They're just as cheap and you can use as much as you want and put the rest back in the freezer. Potatoes, bit of a humble vegetable, aren't they? But they are great at keeping us full. And that's really important when there's a cost of living crisis. You know, you want to have your meals full of nutrient dense food, but you also need the carbohydrates to keep our sugar levels stable and to keep us full. I don't bother taking the skins off. There's no point. Skins are full of vitamins as well. Now I have got some of the spices we need for this curry, and many of them are just store cupboard staples that we have in our kitchens. Now here's a tip from my mum, Mama Khan. When you're buying your spices, don't buy them in those little glass jars because it can work out quite expensive. Make your way over to the international food section of the supermarket and buy them in big bags and then just pour them into jars when you get home. The spices you need for aloo gobi are black onion seeds, which are packed full of vitamin C turmeric powder. Now that is full of an anti-inflammatory substance called curcumin which helps us fight off infections. You can't have a curry without garlic can you? Cumin seeds, you just need a small amount of these and these two are packed with vitamin C. Ginger, delicious and full of antioxidants and we'll finish it off with some chilli powder. Again, more vitamin C in a chilli than there is in an orange. Put some olive oil and some chopped white onions into this pan and we'll just let those onions brown for a few minutes. One of my favourite sounds, sizzling onions. Just half a cup of water, pour that in and added to that the base of our masala tomatoes. In they go. Just let them cook for a couple of minutes. Then in go the black onion seeds, the turmeric, two cloves of garlic, my favourite, a whole spoon of cumin seeds, some ginger powder, teaspoon of that. Now, I like my curries hot, so I'm gonna put a whole teaspoon of this chili powder in. But if you like it mild, maybe go for half a teaspoon. And that goes. It's starting to smell a bit like my mum's now, so I must be doing something right. And you just know it's full of immune boosting nutrients. Another half cup of water, pinch of salt and pepper. Cover it up, leave it for about 10 minutes, and then it'll be ready to eat. That is ready to be served and it smells absolutely delicious. The spices and the cumin seeds have all come together. My mum would be proud. It's a real winter warmer and I like to have it accompanied with some basmati rice and balance out some of those spices with some fresh Greek yogurt. Oh, Amir and Mama Khan, I could eat that right now with a big on like breads and oh, yum 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 I love curry for breakfast now you can find that and loads more recipes on our website if you give that a try do send me a photo I'd love to see your interpretation of Dr Amir's uh, recipes they're brilliant